world, wherever you are. And yes, you, now you see Tom Robb and he's talking about how to start an ER program without great readers. So now over to you, Tom. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't have a PowerPoint for this, actually. I just have some websites to show you. Um, and I really don't want to disappoint our sponsors who are almost all publishers or booksellers, um, but I'm concerned about third world countries, the ones that can't afford graded readers. How can they do extensive reading if they can't get a hold of graded readers? And it's been something that has bothered me for a long time. And actually I found out in Indonesia, a lot of teachers actually use illegal PDFs uh, for their uh, their uh, students because they just don't have access to uh, any graded readers. And that is supposedly unethical, but when you think about it, there's no demand for graded readers and the publishers aren't going into Indonesia. So perhaps if enough people do um, illegal extensive reading <laughs> using PDFs, they'll build the demand to the point where they can actually start selling uh, the books. But anyway, it's not there yet. So anyway, I have two uh, websites I'm going to show you today. And so I need to share my screen. And it's, oh, it's this one here, which currently has my picture. Okay, now it does anymore. So you can see uh, two websites, uh, two different browsers here. And first, I'm not going to talk about all there is about starting an extensive reading program. I and mean, we have, it was three days, but now it's five days worth of talks about uh, doing extensive reading. But if you need a basic uh, guide, if you go to erfoundation.org, the ER guides here, we have guides in 13 languages now about uh, doing extensive reading. Oh, we don't have one in Mongolian yet. Do you, Zina, do you know anything about that? Uh, <laughs> I think uh, sometime in the future, we need one. Uh, the newest is uh, for Thai. Anyway, so that explains me, uh, the basics about extensive reading, but it's focusing on using graded readers. And today I'm going to talk about not using uh, graded readers. So there are two sites and this, hold on. Uh, how do I get this to move over? There we go. This is one of them. And actually I'm going to put in the chat box, um, I'll do it later because people who join later won't be able to see it if I paste it in now, but I'll give you the URLs for this, but it's a simple uh, URL up here. You can see it freegradedreaders.com. And it has, um, some graded readers, it's mostly not graded readers, but uh, at the A1 level, these actually are two uh, graded readers that Paul Nation made very early in his career when he was teaching in Indonesia. And they're downloadable. Um, and these are some others that are out of copyright and I've gotten permission from Della Chiaro and uh, John McRae. Uh, to put them on the site. And it's the same for the other readers. And if you know of anybody who uh, has um, free uh, copyright free material, I'd be happy to put it here with the rest of it. And I just lost my page, okay. And so this goes up, there's some here, the C2 is, um, Oh, I didn't want to open, I want to close. Sorry about that. That's the problem of having advertisements on the site to generate a little um, extra uh, income. So um, here, this is a Ellie book that is a flip book so that you can read it and, but it's not possible to copy. And these are also Paul Nations. He has um, had a team of people take a book that the original book and then uh, reduce the word level to 4,000, 6,000 and 8,000 words. So you can read the same story three times at different levels 
uh, perhaps all of them. But of course, you have to be up to the 4,000 level to even start. These are called mid-frequency uh, readers. And then here, Rong Chan is um, Dr. Ron Lee, um, is a professor in California, probably retired now. And he has a super site with all of these stories here. And I'll show you one of them in a little while, but these are the elementary ones. And these are the intermediate sites. And they have 265 stories. This is the one that I've done something with, which I'll show you in a minute. And these are more uh, of the same. And these are all basically about American culture. They're a bit rah-rah America, but there's a lot of useful information uh, on them. And um, here are some more, well, only one here, Digital Library IO. Uh, this is done by one of the foundations in Asia. And uh, it's in not just English, but many other languages too. The same story is in many different languages. So it's not just for, um, for English. So anyway, uh, I welcome you to use this. And um, I hope that you can steer your students uh, toward this. And then the newest one that I've made is called Online Reading for, for Fluency. And the reason for making this is there's a lot of good material out there that is on different sites. Like this is uh, the British Council site here. Um, <laughs> that's a spider. Um, I think it's a real one. It looks like a doll actually. But anyway, um, it's a story about somebody who is afraid of uh, spiders and she gets some therapy and it works so well she ends up having a spider as a pet. Um, and so it's, they're interesting stories. And so I wanted to put together sites like this one, the British Council site, here, here's another, this uh, British Council Learning English Teen site. And here is Rong Chan's uh, site, the one that has 265 different stories. And this is a Voice of America site. I'll go through them one by one and uh, show you a little about them. And so these, this one is actually created by um, uh, Charlie, um, oh, come on. I've forgotten the last name now. Uh, in uh, Nagoya. Um, anyway, that's my old age catching up on me. So for each of these, there's a quiz. I'm not sure if I can take this quiz or not, actually. Oh, no, I can't because I already answered it once. I'll have to choose one I haven't looked at yet. Uh, close that. Uh, this one, I guess I haven't since it's still blue. Oh, so this is the story. And then click on King of Pumpkins. <laughs> you can look at it, but I can't. All right, I haven't done this one, I'm sure. Okay, so for each one, there are just three questions. And these questions are not like the ones on my M Reader site that are trying to assess whether you read the book or not by asking general questions about the book. Rather, these are ones where you can have the story in front of you and then search for the answers to skim or scan it. So it's a slightly different concept, um, but there are only three questions. And then when you're done, you can submit it. Now, this site is not uh, the way I really wanted it to make. I made this very simply in Google using Google quizzes, which means if you're in China, you probably can't uh, use it. But you can take this and for most of the quizzes, now right now only about 50 of them, but eventually all of them, you can get a score for it. Unfortunately, what it can't do is it can't collect all of the data from one student and put it in one place so the teacher can use it for assessment. Uh, and so that means that we have to make a new site with the same questions and then um, 
do it on something like mReader, or some sort of uh, computer program-based um, content uh, software that can do what we would like it to do, which means make it into a learning management system so the teacher can see what the students have read. So these here are readings on the adult site. These here are on the teen site. And these are rather interesting because for each one of them, you can see somewhere, um, hmm. they each have, I don't see it here. There's three levels of them. Um, hold on, maybe this one actually is the wrong link. Uh, that's what happens when you get uh, students uh, making your quizzes. I might, okay, study a break, graded reading. Okay, here. So um, if you look at this one here, you can see that it's at three different levels. And I have to go back to show you that. Okay, elementary, intermediate, and upper intermediate. So again, you can read the same story three times and each time it gets more and more complex. So if you look at this one here at the elementary level, you can see Tuesday is just this one short paragraph. But if you go to um, the upper intermediate level, now Tuesday is this long, okay? So there's a lot more content there, a lot more vocabulary, um, and it's uh, uh, more descriptive, probably more interesting. So your students, again, can read it at three different levels. We only have uh, the quiz for the lowest level because um, the plot is basically the same. And so we based it on just the uh, lower level. So these are all, they're all written by the same person at the three levels So, But anyway, this is another site that's uh, quite useful. And here you can click to go to the actual link. And here is the Rong Chong one. And this one does have complex vocabulary. I can't say they're as graded as uh, we might wish them to be. For example, this one on the yard man, pickup truck, lawnmower, leaf blower, rake, shovel, uh, wheelbarrow. So there are a lot of uh, words that the students might not know, but it does have vocabulary here where you can look up the vocabulary online. And it does have a close, so I mean, uh, the students could do it individually, or you could uh, copy it and give it to everybody if you wanted uh, everyone to do the same reading, which of course is not the best way to do extensive reading. The best way to do extensive reading is everyone chooses the ones that they read. So um, there are all of these uh, 250 and 265 uh, readings now. And in the future, we can add more, because as you saw, the Rong Chang site has a lot more at the elementary level. This is so, supposed to be intermediate. So I'd like to add an A1 level to this. And then this here is the Voice of America site, but it isn't um, the Voice of America site directly. It's a collection that's on manythings.org. And what they have done is they have collected them from over the years. They have collected them from over the years and put them all in one place. These are really podcasts, they're audio. There's uh, audio here with speed, so you can decide what speed you want to listen to. You can read it for extensive reading, of course, which is our main purpose, but you can also listen to it. You can have the students listen to it and then do the reading, or they could read it and do the listening. You can also adapt some of these for various class uh, uses as well. So um, these here, I've these are the original categories. And what is lacking here is I haven't told you 
exactly what level they are or how many words there are in each of the stories for any of, the, any of these. So I'm going to, in the very near future, the next day or two, hopefully, add to the HTML after every one of these in uh, square brackets, um, the basic um, flesh uh, readability score slash number of words so that students can keep track for themselves of the number of words in each one. And then how do they keep track of it? Well, I think I have it here. One way is to create a graded uh, a sheet like this. And this is done on Google. And so you can make a Google sheet. And I've made one here to help you. If you just put in the names of the students, you can copy and paste them, but I haven't prepared a list. So uh, come on, I can't get it to go in there. Oh, I wonder why. Maybe I'm not logged in right now to this. Uh, ah, I'm not logged into the right account. Okay, so if you paste them in here and then click Create Sheets, it creates a tab at the bottom here for every single student. So they can click on the tab and then add their own information, um, what book they've read, how many words and so forth. And the teacher here on this page can see the current words for each student and a summary of them. And this is free if you go to here, tiny URL, Google hyphen reading hyphen record, you can then um, put a copy of this in your own Google workspace. Um, it's going to warn you that you're doing something dangerous because there's computer code behind here that could be dangerous if somebody wanted to make it that way, but it's safe to use. You just have to say, okay. And once it's moved, this sheet is moved to yours, then you can create as many copies of the sheet for different classes and uh, for each one, uh, paste in the students' names and away you go. So of course, you don't have to use a Google spreadsheet for this. You could have a wall chart or whatever, but the idea is to have some central place where the students can keep track of what they are reading. Um, so that is essentially what I wanted to talk about, but I do want to put, if I can here into the chat, um, there must be a way here for me to put a document in uh, the chat. Um, okay, my computer. Hmm. No, that's for saving the chat. I need some help here. Does anybody know how to actually upload a file here? Or maybe you just can't do that. Um, okay, there's more than one way to skin a cat as they say in the US, in, in the old US. Um, hold on, I'll just go to my desktop. Rob, Rob yeah. this, is Dor this is Doreen, right in the, um, where you write a message, there's a little icon of a file and that's where you can upload a file. Okay, I got this Doreen and it says your computer and it's grayed out for some reason. Oh, cause that's where you can actually- um, Yeah. Go to Dropbox or OneDrive, Google Drive. Oh, then... okay. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I can also do it like this. Um, um, share. Come on. Oh, I can't share it either because it's not in my Dropbox. So, okay. Um, put it in my Dropbox. Now it's in my Dropbox. Now I can share it, uh, create a link. It's been copied. Now I can take that link and put it here. Ta-da, done. Oops, it hasn't. Oops, that went to Wendy rather than everyone. Uh, where is everyone? Everyone in the meeting. Okay, there we go. There we go. Oh, with sound effects. All right, so that's all I had. If you'd like to ask questions, I do we have some more time? No, we're right on time here. Um, 
So we can go to the um, breakout room and yes. I can stop the share. And if anybody would like to chat more about this or have ideas of how it could be um, expanded, but the idea is basically find stuff around the world that um, students can access that's stable so you can make questions for it and they aren't gonna disappear next month um, and uh, add them to the site and have it grow larger and larger. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom Rob. And can we just another big round of applause to him? No, yeah, me too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and as, 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 as Tom said, yes, yes, he's happy to you know, talk a bit more uh, with you in his breakout room. So please, you know, if you're interested, move to there. And so, Wendy. Um, that's the, the next presentation. So Greg, I believe Greg is here now. Tom, oh, yes. can you make yes. Jackie the host, the main host, before you leave? Uh, Tom, Tom Rob is now the main host. Yes, um, I just asked him if he can make Jackie the main host. Oh, let me, yes. Let me go into Tom's room and ask him to come back and change. Yes. It. Oh, 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 we can claim the whole status, but I, I, I have no idea. How yeah, do I don't that. have the claim button on mine. I do. Are you back? I am back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> back, back now, meaning, yeah, somebody talks longer. Sorry, oh, well, well. Yeah, okay, good, great. So actually, Mark, now that you're back, I think this might solve our current minor problem. Uh, the next